What's up guys, my name is Mark Steiner, and today we are going to be reviewing the Ronin SC. Cue the example footage. If you want the TLDR of this gimbal, it's amazing. It's a no-brainer, you should just give them your money because you're not going to find anything better for the price than this. Now into the full review. This gimbal weighs 2.4 pounds, so it's a pretty lightweight gimbal. What that means is that you're going to be able to hold it for longer periods of time without your arms getting tired, and it's nice for traveling, especially when you need that smaller form factor. And with mirrorless cameras, this is who they are targeting. Because of the smaller size and weight, there is going to be a smaller payload, and the payload on this thing is 4.85 pounds, which is pretty respectable for something of this size. What this means is that this gimbal is meant for mirrorless cameras and small entry-level crop DSLRs, so it's really meant for those smaller, full-frame setups from Sony, from Nikon, from Canon, and it's going to be able to take a decent amount of lenses as well, but you're not going to be able to put something like a 70-200 to on this. If you want that, you're going to have to upgrade to the Ronin S. DJI has a constantly updating list of what camera setups will actually fit onto this gimbal, and if you're worried about your specific setup, I would definitely check it out on their website to see if the lens camera combo that you have will fit properly onto this gimbal. Now, even though the SC is technically able to handle some of these bigger lenses, like a 16 to 35 or a 24 to 70, you are going to have some issues when you go to undersling mode or trying to pan all the way up because the back of the camera will be hitting that back motor. So just be aware of that. If you're going to be putting on longer, heavier lenses, this might be an issue for you and you might want to think about upgrading to a more expensive gimbal that can handle that weight class. On to the physical side of this gimbal. This gimbal is really really easy and convenient to use. There are locks now on every single axis so it's not moving anywhere, it's not flopping around like it used to on the previous iterations of the Bigger Brother Ronin S, which is really nice both for traveling, you can just stick it in the backpack or put it in the water bottle pocket and it's not going to rattle around. It's also really nice because on these axes, axes? We're gonna go with axes. On these axes, there are markings for you to measure the exact positioning that you're going to need to set up your camera, which is really helpful. So you're dialing it in that perfect balancing. And as you get more comfortable balancing your camera with different setups, you can more or less memorize where your gimbal needs to be balanced in order to get that perfect balance for the camera setup that you have on it. Battery life is really, really good on this thing. You're getting 11 hours out of a properly balanced gimbal, which is absolutely awesome. So you're completely covered for a full day of shooting if you need that. If you do need a charge on the go, it is also very convenient because it's USB-C compatible. So you can just plug it into a battery bank and it'll charge on the go, which is really nice. My one complaint about the battery is that you actually have to have the gimbal fully set up because the charging port is on the top part of the gimbal, not the battery bank itself, which kind of annoys me because I wish I could just charge the battery portion, but you have to have the gimbal fully set up for it to actually charge, which is unfortunate. There's a battery indicator on the bottom of the gimbal, which is super helpful with four slots, so you can more or less know how much battery you have left, and if you open the Ronin app on your phone, it'll tell you exactly how much battery life you have left. The mini tripod on the bottom of this gimbal is super helpful because then you can just place it down and it'll stay there, so when you're balancing, it's super simple and if you want to do motion lapses or time lapses or just stuff where the gimbal is sitting still it makes it really easy and when you lift it up you can just piece it all together and then you have a second hand placement for the gimbal if you so wish which is really nice the sc has three programmable modes i currently have it on pan follow pan and tilt follow and the awesome 360 mode you can personalize and customize your own modes in the ronin app on your phone if you hold the mode change button this puts you into sport mode which is the most responsive tracking mode that this gimbal offers which is really nice when you need it next to the mode change button is the record button and this will work when you have your camera plugged into the gimbal 
I use the Sony a7R 3 and when I first plugged in my camera, I used the USB-C to USB-C connection because my camera has a USB-C port and it went into the USB mass storage mode and tried to start doing data transfer, which is what it does when I'm trying to update the firmware. So it was freaking out on the gimbal. So I unplugged it and then used the USB-C to micro USB and that seemed to work perfectly fine. So if you're a Sony user, I highly recommend using the micro USB because the USB-C doesn't seem to play well for whatever reason. Once you connect your camera via the wire, you can record movies by the push of the button on the gimbal, which is super helpful because you're not pushing a button on your camera every single time. It makes life so much easier. I highly recommend just leaving this wire plugged in when you're using the gimbal. There is a trigger at the front of this gimbal, just like on the Ronin S, and what that does is that it's going to help you out with certain functions. If you double press, it's going to reset the gimbal to its forward facing position. If you triple tap the gimbal, it'll go into selfie mode, which is really fun if you need that. And if you hold it, it'll go into follow mode. So it's really helpful for a lot of different reasons. On to the usability of this thing. Once you have your camera set up and balanced, this performs as you would expect from a DJI product. You're going to be getting buttery smooth footage for all your videos. I have noticed that the up and down motion is a little bit more prevalent on this gimbal compared to other gimbals, but that's to be expected from a one-handed gimbal as well as this lighter setup. And if you have a lower center of gravity or shoot in 60 or 120 frames per second, you're gonna have no real issues with this. It's not really gonna be noticeable. And you can always apply warp stabilizer to just smooth out that little bit of up and down motion. One of the biggest selling points about this gimbal for me personally was the 360 mode. I love those 360 shots. One of my favorite cinematic shots of all time was in Black Panther when Michael B. Jordan takes the throne for the first time and the camera is just doing this beautiful 180, 360 and I was mind blown by that shot and I was like, I need to recreate that. And so now I finally can, which I think is awesome. And this 360 mode works a lot better than the other gimbals out on the market. The other gimbals are a little bit finicky, and when you move the joystick, it doesn't level perfectly, so you always get this weird oval shape instead of a perfect circle. But with a DJI Ronin SC, you just hold the joystick to one side, left or right, and it's going to get that perfect circle. You don't need to be exactly 90 degrees or zero degrees to get that perfect 360, which is really nice. Any way you push it, it's going to give you that perfect circle, which I really appreciate. Unlike the Ronin S, this joystick is attached permanently, so you're not gonna lose it like you were before. The Ronin SC also comes with that beautiful phone mount for your hot shoot, so you can unlock a lot of those cool software features that you can only get via your phone. With the Ronin SC comes the brand new Active Track software, and you have to have your phone attached to your camera in order for this to work, but it is awesome. This is the same software that's found on their drones, and it's gonna be really helpful. And for someone like me, who's a one-man band, it'll allow me to get these dynamic moving shots without another person there, which is really nice for me. And the active track is pretty accurate, so I have no worries about this. Also on the software side is the motion lapse feature. I was really excited about this feature because it would compete with stuff like Syrup and you could get those beautiful like motion time lapses. And I was so hyped to test this out. And during my testing, it didn't really go well. The first attempt I did, it was taking two to five photos per shot. So it was doing this weird burst mode thing and I finished with 1300 shots, even though I had set it to 15 seconds on a 24 FPS timeline, which meant that I was supposed to have 360 photos, I finished with over 1300 photos. And that was a huge deal breaker. I didn't know what was going on with that. The photos were unusable because it was just a random burst of two to five photos every weird shot. So that was off. And then I tested it again. I put my camera into single shot mode and it seemed to be taking one photo per shot this time. But even in this mode, it still had this glitchy effect where it did not actually take the photo every time when it was supposed to. It, I guess, took some photos in the motion of the motor working. So the final product came out really jittery and unflattering. So I would not use this in a professional setting. And to be honest, I really wouldn't use this in a recreational setting either because it just looks sloppy and I would rather just use a regular time lapse. The Ronin SC also has a brand new mimic feature, which I think is really awesome. It's not really going to come into play that often. I'm not going to use it that often because it's not really that practical, but it's nice to have that option there. Use your phone to dictate where the gimbal is actually going to be pointing the camera and it mimics it exactly. And the range is pretty decent on this thing. But again, you're going to have to have a nicer setup for it to actually dial in those perfect movements because otherwise it just looks really motorized and jittery. I would not be using this in a professional setting just because it doesn't look that good, but it's nice that they included it. Undersling mode is really awesome on this gimbal. I had no issues with it whatsoever, so you can get those low angled running shots, which I absolutely love, and it really shows the foreground, so it can show that stabilized motion. 
Me being the guy who I am, I have a really hard step in my run, so uh, I could notice the jitter when I was doing hard hardcore running like that. I'll throw some examples up here, but as you can see, it's not perfectly stable, but this is something that, even though it's not perfectly stable, people are gonna appreciate that different kind of angled shot. It kind of looks like a drone shot, and you're not gonna be able to recreate that handheld. It's just gonna be a shaky mess, especially if you're shooting in 24 frames per second. So the fact that you're able to get pretty stable footage from this kind of stuff is going to really allow you to get different shots that you couldn't do before. Speaking of shots that you couldn't get before, because I've been using my gimbal, I usually shoot all my b-roll at 120 frames per second just because I shoot everything handheld. I really like that buttery smooth slow motion, but now that I've had this gimbal, because there's no jitter or anything and I don't need to mask the fact that it's handheld, I've been shooting at 24, 30, and 60 frames per second. I haven't had to go to 120 when I'm using my gimbal just because it's so stable. And I really like the, the difference that those faster frame rates allow me to do because it's, it's not as crazy as before. And for me, it's really fun and interesting to test out different frame rates for different things because I don't really shoot in 60p because I had the option to do 120. But now with this gimbal, because I have it steady, I can do that, and I think that's really cool. I highly recommend this gimbal. If you're in the market for one, this is a no-brainer. You really just need to buy it and make the purchase, and you're going to love it. It's not going to be an issue whatsoever. I have been waiting for this gimbal to exist for a long time. I was always looking for a gimbal that was small, lightweight, and sub $500, and that met all the criteria. And the fact that it's coming from a reputable brand, and you get a really good product, just makes my life so much easier. So. Will you be buying this gimbal? Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. My name has been Mark Steiner, and I'll see you next time.